Hi, I'm James Robinson, and this is my stock pick of the week. This week's stock is Warner Enterprises, symbol W-E-R-N. Wanted to give you a heads up that I can be found on Twitter. My handle is at Robinson Stocks. Um, on that site, on my Twitter page, you'll find real-time information on trades. I don't always make a video the instant that I buy a stock, and I don't make a video the instant that I sell one, but I do try and tweet about it so that there's a record of what I've done and when I've done it. Um, <clears throat> you also get updates on when new videos are posted, and if I have any news and thoughts on the market and stocks in the portfolio, uh, as, uh, as time goes on, I'll also post that information on Twitter. I'd also like to remind you to please subscribe, like, and comment. I'll do five videos on Warner Enterprises. Uh, the first one, this video, is, on, is a view, uh, an overview of the company. I'll do one on the company's operations, one on its debt, one on its dividends, and one on its ability to create wealth for us, the shareholders. So Warner Enterprises is a transportation and logistics company. It engages in transporting truckload shipments of general commodities in the interstate and intrastate commerce in the United States, Mexico, Canada, and China. It's important to note this is an area where I've spent a little bit of time. I've bought uh, services in Martin Transport. I bought into stocks in Martin Transportation. I've looked at Swift. Uh, I've looked at um, manufacturers of trucking uh, trailers. So this is an industry that I'm starting to get a little bit of expertise in. So as is pretty typical with these large trucking companies, um, Warner Enterprise operates in two segments, the truckload transportation services and Warner Logistics. The truckload transportation services segment operates a medium to long haul van fleet. Um, they transport various consumable, uh, consumer non-durable products and other commodities in truckload quantities. So they use dry vans. Uh, they have an expedite fleet that offers time sensitive truckload services using driver teams. They have regional short haul fleet um, that provides comparable truckload van service in the United States. They have a temperature control tr fleet that offers truckload services for temperature sensitive products um, using the, you know, the, the trailers that are temperature controlled. Uh, they also transport retail store merchandise, consumer products, grocery products, and manufactured products. So really kind of the whole gambit. I mean, obviously it's a multi-billion dollar trucking company, so you can imagine they do it all. Um, Warner Logistics provides uh, non-asset-based transportation and logistics services, including truck brokerage, logistics management services and solutions, rail transportation through alliances with rail and drayage providers. They have management of shipments from origin to destination using a combination of air, ocean, truck, and rail transportation modes, and home and business deliveries of heavy items using lift gates straight trucks. Um, as of December 31, 2018, the company had a fleet of 7,820 trucks. That includes 7,240 company operated, as well as 580 owned and operated by independent contractors. They have 25,250 company owned trailers um, that comprise dry vans, flatbeds, and temperature controlled and other specialized trailers. And they have 40 intermodal drayage trucks. So, um, Warner Enterprises was founded in 1956 and is headquartered in Omaha, Nebraska. The company has 12,852 employees. By the way, I've used the word drayage several times, and if you don't know anything about the trucking industry, you may not know what that means. Just by way of education, drayage is the process of taking goods typically from a port to some area reasonably nearby that's not at the port. Um, oftentimes, it technically can be a seaport, a border point, an inland port, or an intermodal terminal. But effectively, it's a, it's a specified, a, a unique kind of transportation where you pick something up at the port, you zip it off to some place across town, where it then is obviously, is typically repackaged and sent someplace else or used for manufacturing. So as of December 5th, 2019, the company had a market cap of $2.5 billion. It had revenues of $2.4 billion, $2.49 billion, $173 million in profits, it trades at a PE of just under 15 has a relatively small yield of 0.98, which I don't like, but it is what it is. And the company only had $360 million in debt, so effectively zero debt. So here you can see how I've analyzed this company in terms of the various components that I think are important when looking at a company. Um, I rate companies in a category of one to four, and I do that in three broad areas, operating issues, which is issues related to how good a job the company does in delivering goods and products to the company. Um, financial, which is how the company handles debt and ultimately risk to the shareholders. And third, management, which is how good a job the company does of taking, uh, creating value 
uh, for the shareholders, whether through dividends or share repurchases or intelligently investing our money in other operations. I just thought I'd talk briefly about you know how, what I look for and what I'm looking for. So generally speaking, I, I look, I compare how this company or a candidate company does relative to the other thousand companies that I've looked at. So I've rated these companies and said, all right, this is the top 10% in gross margins. The top 10% of gross margins might be 50% gross margins for the sake of conversation. And then I look at what the top 25 does. That may be, you know, 40% gross margins and on down the line. So I see where this company's gross margins are relative to other companies uh, that I've looked at. Uh, what I'm looking for, for example, in gross margins is, are the gross margins relatively consistent? Are they bouncing all over the place? Is the trend that their gross margins are getting better or that the gross margins are eroding? So I look at a number of things as I look at these categories. How good they do in terms of an absolute, what are the gross margins? That, of course, is really important to me. But secondly, what's happening to the gross margins? Are they getting better or worse? And how are they relative to other companies? Now, when you look at a gross margin that I've given um, this company, for example, um, you'll see that I've rated it on a scale of one to four as a one. That's simply because the trucking industry is a, is a low margin business. It's a commodity business. There's not much differentiation between one trucking company and another. And so um, that's a company that, uh, that, obviously I'm looking for companies that don't have those characteristics. I'm investing in this company for other reasons. But I look at them, I take it, I look at the aggregate for all of these companies and I come up with a rating so this company has a uh, total GPA of 3.1. Um, that means it's the 118th best company in terms of total operations of the 914 companies that I looked at. That's very, very solid. Uh, so that's why we're suggesting you should buy it. We think the price is low and we think the company is very solid. And in this case, I think that the company's prospects are, are pretty good relative to the price of the margins. Right now. I think the market has really beat this stock up and, and doesn't look at what could be happening with a growing economy and and uh, NAFTA and the new creation, I guess it's the, the new NAFTA that's being created. So in summary, I think Warner's a solid play. It's a good company. It's overall rating is again, 3.1. So that puts it in my buy range in terms of this is a company I'd like to buy at the right price. Um, it's, you know, it's like I said, 118 out of the 940 companies that I've reviewed. So clearly in the top 20% of companies. Uh, the company has very little debt. Uh, it has a low PE or relatively low at 14.7, you know, the Average PE for the S&P 500 is about 23, and this company is two thirds of that. So it's relatively, relatively cheap relative to the market. It has a very small yield. It has some yield, but not much. But it also buys back a little bit of shares. And in general, its management seems to do a good job of creating wealth and preserving wealth for the shareholders. Um, so I, I, while I think the company is appealing on its merits, um, it's more appealing to me for the larger reason that it's a trucker. And I think that the new North American free trade agent will really help truckers, as will the continued booming economy. Um, also the fact that manufacturing seems to be coming back to America and or at the very least, it's no longer leaving in droves like it was. So all this enhances that a tr when a trucker drops off goods from Canada or Mexico, it'll likely have goods to pick up and eventually take back to those markets. So where I'm really banking on you is that I think there'll be more and more two-way traffic for truckers. You know, if you think about it, if you're if all of the goods and products are coming from China, then what you've got is a bunch of trucks picking up goods and services at the port in, call it Long Beach, and then driving those goods and services around the world, around the country. But then once they've dropped them off, there's nothing to take back to California. And so half of the trips are either empty or they're shipping at a dramatic discount because there's no demand. And so what I like for truckers is this concept that there's going to be goods and products being built in multiple areas. There's going to be trade going back and forth, and they might be dropping off, you know, they might be picking up stuff at a port in China, I mean, in, in Long Beach, and driving up to, you know, Portland where they get lumber, and then they drive that off to a paper mill somewhere, and they pick that up, and they go to the next place, and they're constantly having full loads instead of having these deadhead trips. I think that that's going to happen more and more as the economy continues to boom and as, as, as manufacturing happens more and more in America. Uh, so I like the company in general. In the long run, I think trucking companies have a massive... The other thing I want to bring up is that I think trucking has a massive potential to lower their costs. Uh, I think in the medium to long term, they'll do that through automated driving and the electric electrification of their fleet. Automated driving means there's no more truckers. I mean, if you think about it, the biggest single cost for a trucking company outside of their equipment and maybe even inclusive of their equipment is, is these um, the drivers. And if the trucks can drive themselves, even just the freeway portion, they get to try. They get to drive 24 hours in a row, without a break. 
and they don't have to pay the people. So that's a, both an increase in productivity and a reduction in cost. The same thing goes for electrification of the fleet. Electrification may or may not be cheaper relative to gas in terms of miles delivered, um, but it will certainly be cheap, cheaper in terms of um, in terms of man, uh, maintenance because the electric engine has no moving parts. It will also be cheaper in that um, electrification will increase the ability. It has much more torque. Electric engine is much more torque. And as a result, you'll be able to carry more weight and or carry more weight uphill at a faster pace. If you've ever driven through the mountains behind a truck, you realize they're going 15 miles an hour for mile after mile after mile. And with an electric truck, they'll just zip up the hill. And those savings, again, are savings that, that accrue to the benefit of the trucking fleet. So I think that automated driving and electrification will be fantastic boons to this industry in the long term. Long term, I mean three to 10 years. Um, and I think there's short and medium tailwinds for the industry that I've talked about due to the free trade and, and manufacturing happening in America. Um, so um, I think that it's obviously important to point out that I'm kind of in the minority in terms of thinking this. Generally speaking, people seem to be down on the trucking industry, and that's really why the stock is being offered at such an appealing price. But this is a stock that I'm not sure I mind holding for the medium to long term, uh, simply because I think that, and, and by the way, it might drop in the short term. But I think in the, in the medium and long term, this company's going to do very well, and that's why I'm suggesting you might want to buy it. I think I bought it at 3680 ish and um, at that price, I think it's a good price for the buy, to buy the stock.